Okay, good morning, everybody. Today is uh, November 5th, 2020, and welcome to this week's Vindo with Robert Hollinshead. So today uh, with Bob is a guest again from VinLogic. So we had a, you know, please uh, show us how it's integrated and how it works with Accutrade and numerous inquiries. So Keith is joining us again, CEO from VinLogic, to show us uh, a demo on how it looks from a dealer's perspective. And I'll turn it over to you gentlemen. Thank you. So let me just figure, begin real quick with before Keith starts doing his stuff uh, to help any you know dealer that actually happens to be taking a peek at this later. Um, how and why this is, I think, really something that's uh, kind of special. It's never been done before in the automobile industry, and it's all about enabling um, transparency and communication with a consumer so that we don't have we eliminate the ability for a dealer to trade cars blindly it doesn't mean we're not we're suggesting you don't trade cars with problems of course you trade cars with problems but it's all about the knowledge of what the problem is and then being able to leverage that absolute factual data with the consumer to help them understand that you're not trying to uh, under trade their car but that you also simultaneously are not silly sucking your thumb over trading the car most cases, not all, but many, I should say, cases, uh, a consumer's trading a car in knowing there's an issue. And because they know a dealer's a professional, they don't have to disclose it. We're not asking them to disclose it because they never would, right? Because they obviously would fear the fact that then, you know, they would get less for their car. In in this combination of product that we're um, bringing to the market, um, we enable a dealer leveraging technology and third-party product set to actually enumerate what exactly the car is, what the effect of that value of that car is based on its current condition. It could be phenomenal. It could be unbelievable good. But then the dealer also knows that when he puts his car in the shop, he's not going to get an ax smash on top of his head by the service manager saying that it needs, you know, $5,300 to certify, right? Because we already know the information. This it's not just communication with the com, with the uh, trading consumer. It's also better communication with your service manager, um, which I'm sure no one's ever had that type of uh, animosity circumstance in the past. I'm positive of that. Or it happens 32 times a week. And if we already know before someone uh, presents us with that information, the the, that level of knowledge enables a different level of communication. With that, uh, Keith, I'll let you uh, uh, take over and uh, basically explain the brilliance of uh, what you have and how we believe it fits perfectly for all new and used car dealers that are uh, buying, selling, and trading cars. Thanks, Bob. As Bob said, uh, and Sean said, I'm Keith McCord, uh, CEO of VinLogic here in St. Louis, Missouri. That's where we're located. We uh, <clears throat> we are a basically a telemetry company. We gather data on vehicles, and and I know we talked a little bit about it on the last podcast I was on, and and we've gotten a response to where people want to see how this really works, how this all, all flushes out. So what I did, and and I, I apologize, I'm not the greatest AccuTrade user. I'm not a, a whiz like it, Bob, but I'll try to go through the screens just to show you. These are actual cars that were scanned at Mannheim, PA. So these are in the AccuTrade system. They were scanned by Joe, I believe, out there with our with our system. And one of the things that we've really done is we've integrated our data so that we're a feeder to uh, AccuTrade. And what that really means is that that Bob and company have all that data flowing in in real time that they can take a look and put that directly into the AccuTrade report. So what I've got here, I'll just click on a couple of these that I've got going. So what you'll see here is you'll start to look, you'll see our Vintel button popping up right in front of Carfax. And what it will tell you is it tells you with a green check mark that this car has passed our exception reports. So we're not saying it's a good car, bad car. What we're telling you is that this particular vehicle has had been tested and we haven't found any exceptions that you should go look at. And I'll cover those exceptions when we actually look at the tool. But Just hold point, one second at that second. Just one second. I promise I won't interrupt uh, uh, except for to explain for AccuTrade dealers, dealers that are currently using our tool, 
most dealers find our common problems to be a very interesting thing because we're kind of telling you before you look at a car what to actually be specifically looking for. This is an extension of that. So when Keith clicks on the Vintel report, you will actually see if it has a timing component issue like we're talking about, it would be revealed. If it has a EGR, whatever it might be, it's actually being revealed uh, at that second. And that's exactly the way the report comes up. So AccuTrade users that like auto check, they can look at the auto check report. AccuTrade users that are Carfax, they, can do it. they want to look at a window sticker. That's fine. But now you're actually looking at the cumulative data on that particular car. And if you were trading the car, when you plug it in, that report will show up exactly where uh, the Vintel button is. So you will be able to use it yourself, but also share it with the consumer to let them understand the electronic and mechanical health of their car. I just wanted to add that so we don't brush over how it is leveraged in the the, the uh, product set. Thank you. I apologize. I don't want to interrupt you again, sir. And, and and really what this is, is this is just another tool like the Carfax report, the auto check. So the dealers that use our system today print this out and use it to either discuss during the trade-in or even use it as a uh, kind of a, a preferred report when they're selling a used car as part of their 175-point checklist. So all, all you have to do is click on that button and that brings the report up. And we'll cover this report in a second. But because it's a normal, what we consider a normal car with no exceptions, you get a green check mark. So you don't have to even look at the report if you don't want to. We're telling you that according to the tests that we do and the criteria that feed into AccuTrade, this car is a good past car. Now, so, we, so Keith, just at that moment, just because we have these conversations where we're already jumping into our conversations way downstream, help listeners also understand what this means because all dealers are subjected to uh, NAAA rules, right? National Auto Auction Association rules. So when a car has a, uh, a red icon and when you click in, uh, and we can actually verify what it is, if it's an arbitratable item or not. So at a retail level, of course, all the things that are wrong with a car, you're probably gonna have to fix before you put it in the front line. If you're pushing the car to a an auction, it really doesn't make it what kind of auction it is, if it's an arbitratable item, you need to be aware of that when you're trading the car um, so that you don't wind up uh, over trading a car that because you weren't aware of what the issue is. I just want to add that in because it's kind of like a um, it, it's like an ancillary use case and understanding of why we believe this is so important. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. Oh, so so what Bob really talks about is we're actually an associate member within the NAAA and we are working with the NAAA to where they're looking at all little issues with a car and deciding is that an arbitratable issue or not. And what ends up happening is that when we push that data on the car, that health report on the vehicle into AccuTrade, we only are highlighting the issues that are in AAA arbitratable. You'll see all the other issues like a door lock doesn't work or a license plate lamp is out. You see those if you want to pound the trade down but we only devalue the car on things that would affect it downstream through the NAAA ratings. And this is a great example. Here's a 2014 Infiniti Q60, decent car, but you'll notice that the Vintel report, instead of showing the green check, it actually has the no symbol, a red. And if we click on that, what you see is this car has an exception. And up at the top, and I'll explain this as we go further, it tells us there's a few issues with the car. If we scroll down, we can see that it doesn't pass emissions. So this is technically illegal to sell this vehicle because it cannot pass uh, federal emissions of the EPA. And we also see we have some problems here and who's complaining about the problems. We've got an ABS traction control failure. It's driving a light on the dashboard, which we show up here that another light is lit. The check engine light's not lit, but another light is lit. And we can see all this and I'll cover this when we go into a live demonstration on this. And what we do is because this particular code is an NAAA code, what we're setting up to do is we'll flip that light on for you. And I looked up the repair costs on this. It's two $300 parts and uh, 3.8 hours of labor. So the issue of a traction control light on this vehicle devaluing at 1,000, it's pretty spot on with what the repair would be if you're going to fix that car. So that's some of the automated things. You don't have to figure out what's wrong with the car, what's that light mean, what's it going to do to us. And furthermore, what Bob was talking about in the common problems, 
we actually do analytics. So we're feeding this information now into AccuTrade to really hone down on the issues with these vehicles. So instead of just saying we've got a transmission noise slip, we know that if 30% of the fleet has a particular DTC code and it costs this much to repair that, that now really starts to hone in on the value that each DTC or problem code of the vehicle devalues that car. So just real quick, that also has not just a retail application with a consumer, right? Because they had the car in the service department or it's in the service department now, and now they don't want to spend the, the retail cost of 2700 to fix it. They want to trade it in, right? So now you have a, a platform of common communication to understand what it is and why they're getting what they're getting so they can feel confident that they got a fair price for their car. Think about the, the auction application to this. So this becomes almost an automated arbitrator, right? So in other words, are you going to be able to charge retail? Of course not. You're not going to charge retail for a, a wholesale car with a 80,000 mile, but there is an associated fair market value of what the, the, the valuation of that vehicle is, right? And at, at, at that moment, we actually have, so this is not just for in-lane cars. If it were a, 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 a a virtual uh, a circumstance marketplace where obviously we all know they're growing in uh, depth and breadth, right? How many there are now, how, ma how many cars there's handling. This also then becomes, I would call it the, um, let's call it the universal language. If English is the universal language of uh, medical students and technology people, engineers, et cetera, worldwide, this becomes the, uh, the ability for all players buyers, sellers, fleets, whatever, to understand the actual evaluation associated with it at the level they're dealing with it. Could be retail, could be wholesale, could be an auction, right? It could be just dealing with your service department. They say it needs X. What if it really needs Y? Because you, so all of the variations basically grow out, grow out of what uh, you're saying right here. Uh, again, I apologize, Keith, but it's kind of important to get those nuances in in case there is an auction uh, that's thinking about or or listening to how it would apply to them. And then all of their customers, the only customer that an auction has is a car dealer. And car dealers have variations of color, sizes, and shapes, right? So some are retail specific, but they do bring their cars to the auction. And how would this help them be a smarter seller and, and be able then be a, 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 let's call it a better customer because your anticipation, what you're going to get has already been to a certain degree been, been uh, uh, defined. Okay, I'm sorry to do it again, but I just want to be sure for other folks that may be listening how the relevance of this could uh, uh, click into their reality. No, yeah? no problem. Uh, so here we're going to walk through real quickly what the diagnostic status report is without getting really into the weeds. But we break it down into areas that you can decipher. So you can drill down to the level of comfort you want to see with that vehicle. So we start off with information on the side. Every time you scan a vehicle, we log that, we build a report. You can roll back and look at the pedigree of the vehicle all the way back. So if you scanned it yesterday, you fix it, you scan it today, you'll see the results of that repair because things on the report will change. And if you, when we get into more advanced things, we can work that through with you. But this basically gives you an idea of what we scanned, when we scanned it, the report number, the vehicle, mileage, fuel, what the battery is doing. So just a general overview on the side. Then at the top, what we do is we have our summary. So we have a real quick dash lights up here, which tell you, do we have an exception? And those exceptions are things such as the dash lights on. Uh, it won't pass emissions. There's codes present. Uh, it's been recently reset. The guy was down at the AutoZone before he dropped it off at the dealer or the auction, and he cleared the codes to try to sneak one past the goalie here. So we give you that information and the exceptions, whether the check engine light is on, this check engine light is really driven by the powertrain. So that's typically going to be an emissions problem, an EPA violation, something big. We also give you the indication to other dash lights on. This could be ABS, traction control. It could be uh, airbag light. It could be brake lights. It could be battery lights. So, and we highlight that down below. We tell you if it's got fuel, basically, because people bring those cars to the auction with a thimble full of fuel. And then we also give you the more important thing that will it pass emissions or not. And as Bob's talked before, it's against the EPA federal specs to sell a car that is not emissions qualified, regardless of your county. So that's one thing that you start to have to be aware of, depending on what the EPA is doing 
with the new administration, we don't know, but it's better to be prepared and be ready to follow the rules if you need to. So then we give you a little bit of a check-in summary. We tell you how many DTCs or diagnostic trouble codes it's got, whether they're current, meaning they're active, pending means they're about to happen, permanent will stay there. Even if they clear the car, it'll stay there for 50 to 100 starts. So you can go back and see if they're trying to sneak something past you, you know what they're trying to sneak by. And we give you some emissions information, is it a spark or a diesel, and, and will it pass or not. Then we tell you why we threw an exception. So this is what dictates whether it gets a green check or that little red dash in Accutrate. If you wanna understand why we flagged it, it'll tell you right here. Then if you really wanna to start to diagnose the car, we start to get an information about was it reset? How many miles ago was it reset? How many miles has it been driven around with the check engine light on? If it's been driven around for 24,000 miles with the check engine light, probably don't have a good and well taken car, uh, well taken care of car. We also tell you what's failing on emissions. In this case, this car has an EVAP problem. And then finally, we drill all the way down to give you who is complaining, who's setting the lights, who isn't setting lights, and what the status of the codes are, and a simple English description of it. So this is all how far you want to drill down. We have even more information. If people crave it, we'll give that to you. But basically, the nice thing about this and what Bob talked about, talking with the service guys and that, one of the things that we're doing is everybody looks at this data the same. So whether you're a wholesale auction, whether you're a dealer, whether you're the service lane, whether you're a parts guy, we're bringing this common report down so everyone comes to the table talking the same language. So you're not talking about dogs and the other guy's talking about cats. We're all talking about dogs here. And it just makes the conversation so much easier because the NAAA is talking about it, the auctions are talking about it, and the dealers are talking about it. So what does the system consist of? It's an OBD module, it's Bluetooth enabled. So we can give you one per dealership, 10 per dealership, a wholesaler has in his pocket, he's running around all over the country using it. The auctions use it at check-in, the auctions use it at uh, post-sale. So it's the same tool, it does everything. So it doesn't matter, and again, that's that common language we're talking about. So we have the OBD module, they're 49 bucks a piece, so you can buy as many as you want, we don't care. The device is your phone or tablet, it's Android or iPhone capable. As long as your device is newer than nine years old, you shouldn't have a problem working with Bluetooth. And then finally, we also give you the web portal, and that's where you can buy more modules, you sign up for your subscription service, uh, you can add users, add email, uh, assign modules to individual people so you can tell if Frank is scanning more cars at the gate than Bob. So all that is completely uh, owned by the dealer, the auction, or the wholesaler. I'm going to train you on how to use the system. You start the car up, starts the car's running, you plug the module, and you open your app and you wait. If your app's already open, you can have your phone in your pocket and it'll finish. That's your training. That's all it takes. We built the system for the lowest common denominator, which could be someone who has no idea about a car. We show them what the OBD port looks like, and they're off and running. That's all they need to know. They don't and have obviously, uh, uh, when you're doing it to appraise a car, while you plug it in, you're taking the pictures of the car, so you have a complete appraisal. So you're valuing it while you're putting it into the, inform the information that's being loaded into AccuTrade uh, 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 for your appraisal to be presented to the consumer. Correct. And we're working mm -hmm. with Jeff uh, to embed our app actually into the AccuTrade phone app. So soon you won't even have to open up our app. When you open up AccuTrade and start your appraisal, it's automatically connecting up to our wow. module in the background. And you don't even know it other than the fact that your scan is finished. So let's look at a, a, a video here. This is actually a real-time video of a, of a plugging in a car. So they plugged in a car. It tells it it's on Bluetooth, blue light lights up. It's acquiring the VIN with red. He started up his phone. We just learned how to tape a phone screen, which is kind of cool. It's now going through and collecting diagnostics. When it's finished with the diagnostics, now it's flashing blue and green. It's finished. It's uploaded the app, and that's it. That was a real-time scan of a BMW. That's how fast it took that vehicle. Now, vehicles typically will, depending on how they're equipped, and Fords are the ones that are the slowest because of the way they built it. But it takes between 20 and 80 seconds typically is what we tell people to do that. So you can't even get around a car and take your pictures in that time. And then once it's finished, the phone lets you know it. It sends you a notification that it's done through your standard phone app notification window. And you can click on the 
uh, car itself and look at the report. So you saw the report there. If we look at it, that same report we showed you in AccuTrade is also available on your phone. Same format, same look, same language and everything. So it's common whether you're on the phone, whether you're on the web, whether you're in AccuTrade, whether the auctions are using it through their uh, operating systems, it's the same look of a report. The only difference is going to be is a logo at the top. We let you put your logo on it. You saw the AccuTrade logo. We've got auction logos. We've got dealer logos already on them. So it gives it a personalization on there. But other than that, they look the same. We're speaking that same language. From the web portal standpoint, that, that's the web portal that I talked about. You have complete control over that. So you can log in through your phone, through your desktop, what have you. All the reports are in uh, just your browser. So once you're looking at the report, you can text it to someone else, you can print it, you can forward it, you can email it, you just treat it like any other web page on your phone or on the web portal. It's very, very simple to use, doesn't take any training. And really, that's the system. It's that simple to do. It doesn't take a lot of training, it's not hard to use. As long as you know how to start the car and you can find the OBD port, which is typically right underneath the, the steering wheel, um, you plug it in and you wait for your phone to chime and you're off to the races. So what that means is like if you got a condition report writer or a, a sales guy walking the car, he may not know how to read that report, but he knows how to at least get the data without any real training. Any questions on that? It's actually hard to have questions, isn't it? It's a little bit too simple. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's great, especially uh, for dealerships taking in their appraisals and being able to talk to their service department and say, hey, look at this. Uh, you might want to take a peek here. I've already made note of it. and We've had a conversation with the consumer and it, it will. You'll get cars ready for retail or ready for wholesale a lot quicker. I would I would even say that would be a spin off benefit of it for sure. And, and the beauty of it is, is that we're, we're signing up auctions. Like, in fact, we just did a deal with America's Auto Auctions. All 23 of them uh, are now going to be using our system. So, in effect, they're speaking the same language. So, if you took that car in trade and then they take it into the gate, you have the same language you're talking about. We've got a lot of little independent auctions using this. And they're, they're using it to talk with the dealer, work hand in hand with the dealer. Because the dealers are using this already to evaluate the trade-ins. It's that common language that we're talking. And now that we are working with the NAAA as an associate member, that just leads even more power to it because you've got someone helping guide the decisions and what really is going to affect the value of this car if you're taking it through the entire transaction, whether you're retailing it or you're wholesaling it. It's all the common data going through the system. Wonderful. So I think that's uh, a good way to end it for today. Um, I, I know this was a question that we were asked to do by some dealers that were on the call before, so uh, I hope we can get it out to them. I want to uh, thank everyone for joining. Uh, Bob, next week, I really, I'd love to talk about buying cars out of the service lane. I think it's something we've been, uh, been kind of wanting to get your take on it and how, to, how dealerships should be doing it and why they should be doing it and the absolute potential of it. Um, so if we can do something and guys, like that, and guys that are actually, we, we, we actually can have, I think a guest on that's having tremendous success with it. Uh, if we'd like to do that, um, he runs a 14, uh, rooftop, uh, a dealership group that I think could be a lot of fun to have, uh, his, um, experience with it. Yep. That would be great. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thank you.